get more lens flare in episode nine that's the fan service we all need from jj abrams welcome back everybody to the resistance broadcast my name is john hoey thank you so much for being a part of the resistance and joining us today uh, as we approach the weekend we are going to talk about something that we touched on briefly in ask the resistance on monday and that is whether or not jj abrams and chris terrio are going to be influenced, or were influenced, I should say, by uh, the reactions to The Last Jedi in terms of how they wound up constructing the story in final drafts of Episode Nine. So we're going to get into a big discussion on that, and we're introducing a new segment in a few moments to get us going. But first, let's say hi to the guy who's always here with us, James Bainey. What's going on, man? I've been preparing for three days to talk about this story. That's not exactly accurate, (laughs) Mm. but... So so you're releasing a PR statement that's not confirming nor denying, but you are releasing a statement. (laughs) That's true. Um, (laughs) Do you know the lens flare thing is a pet peeve of mine when people talk about J.J. Abrams and his overuse of lens flare and associating him with lens flare? Why is that? I, like, I don't agree that it was overused in star trek like i get but like the the vibe coming out of that movie is people are like oh i don't even understand i just i just kept focusing on these uh, things that were happening on the screen i don't even know what they're called like and then they would find out they're called lens flare and then it became a meme to associate lens flares with jb abrams and stuff and i'm like Dude, the movie looked awesome. Like, it was a stylistic choice. It wasn't like he overdid it. It was like that was the vibe of the movie, and it was beautiful. Imagine that was the biggest gripe that Star Wars fans have with Star Wars movies right now. It was just like, yeah, just lens flare. Everything else is great, but, it, you know, just the lens flare. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only trolling is I about wish. lens flare. Maybe we'll live in that world one day where it's just like one yeah. weird kind of stylistic choice. <laughs> People are like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, you know. Not like, like no one's ever going to be like, that lens flare destroyed my childhood, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. The original <laughs> trilogy did not look like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens when nine comes out. But um, we're going to get into that discussion about J.J. Abrams. And a little bit. Um, but Lacey Gillerin is still not here. She is uh, up north. Mm-hmm. She is, I believe, in Canada somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, I know Monday I, Monday I said she was in on Hoth, but Hoth's not really a real place, folks. I made that up. It's, a, it's just it's a part of Star Wars, okay? Um, but she's up in Canada somewhere, and she will be back with us next week. So get home safe, Lacey, and we'll see you soon. Um, so James... I guess we kind of, you know, we can't really do is the force with you with just two people. Because it's just like, you know? I actually don't know. I think we could do is the force with you with two people. But sometimes you got to shake it up. And you got to create some new stuff. All right. So what will we come up with? Let's see. Well, we can't what about just the force w- a name. Oh, I got it. What about the will of the force? No, that's stupid. Oh. You know what? I take it back. What? You've convinced me, John. I know Whoa! the fans like to hear that. <laughs> well, I do write all the show notes. So. <laughs> still bitter. <laughs> Three days, still, still bitter. Still bitter. I'll always be bitter. Um, yeah, so James, let's, let's, let's check this thing out. Let's give this thing a shot. The Will of the Force. Explain to us what it kind of is, and, and let's just fire it up and see what happens. Um, The Will of Force is simply just going to be us saying yes, no, will they, won't they? Like just your basic gut reaction to the the, uh, proposal. It's going to be a simple question. We're going to say yes or no. 
Um, and then we're just going to rapid fire through a couple different possibilities of things that might be potential. I'm taking longer explaining it than I think it will be to get through the show. So let's just go <laughs> ahead and get started. Um, my first question, uh, uh, I say my first because I write the show notes. Um, John, what? <laughs> John's so mad. <laughs> let's set the record straight before we get into the will of the force. John writes the show notes every week, and he does an amazing job. He oh. congregates all the stories. It's awesome. So, let's get into yeah, this. Uh, let's get into this. <laughs> I fear nothing for all this, as the Force wills it. John, will Lucasfilm make a Boba Fett movie? They won't. They won't. No simple, just uh, no complex answers. No nothing. Are they, they're, are they gonna do it? I don't think they will. All right. I think they will. They're definitely okay. making a Boba Fett movie. One way or another, they've gone through Josh Trank and other people. Like, it'll happen. They just got to find the right steps. And it will be a Boba Fett movie, not him appearing in another movie. Um, I, yeah, I, I definitely don't think there's any way. Uh, I, I think you have to do Boba Fett as a, a, a group. And he's going to come out of the Sarlacc and he's going to say, I'm overrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Scotty Jero has anything to say about Scotty it. Scotty Jero, the greatest of all time comment. Next question. Will Lucasfilm make... An Obi-Wan Kenobi film. They will. I said that weird. An Obi-Wan Kenobi film. <laughs> An Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, you say they will. Yes. This is this is actually going to be the hardest one for me. Um, I uh, d- 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 I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no. Oh, really? They won't? Yeah, I'm going to say no. I, I think it's just, I think there's going to be too much pressure on it, and it's going to be like, oh, man, we wish we could, but we tried some of these other stories, and it just didn't really work out, and we're just going to and not end up doing it. Right. But yeah. So in Baney World, it's they will make Fett, they won't make Kenobi, and I'm saying they won't make Fett, and they will make Kenobi. Interesting. All right, yeah. what else? All right, will Alden Ehrenreich ever play Han Solo again? This could be TV. This could be something, you know. He will. Um, yeah, you say he will. I say he will. I say you got a young actor. I think that, that Solo will come around with the fans at, at some point, and they'll just like to see him or revisit the character again, and that might actually help maybe paint it in a different light. Han Solo will return, and that character will be played by Alden Ehrenreich in one way or another. Should we ring a bell when if we all like, agree? You are watching, you are listening to a live <laughs> creation <laughs> in progress uh yeah i mean we'll, we'll we might come up with something i think uh, some sound effects could be pretty cool like a uh, or a ding 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 or something if we say yeah. yes or no um we'll figure it out uh let's move on to the next question though because this is rapid fire fun will daisy ridley the actress daisy ridley appear in a live action star wars film or series after episode nine so this is like the last one but uh, more about Daisy, uh, Razy Diddley, as we like to call her here. Um, John, what do you say? She will. She will appear in a live action Star Wars film or series. Which one? I think I think a live action film, episode 10, way down the line, maybe in 10 years. I don't think her career is going to go the way she necessarily wants. She will come back. She won't necessarily be a li- like an all or nothing Star Wars type of person, but she's going to come back and she's going to be Ray again. All right, I uh, I agree with that, and I think the thing is film, not series. I don't see her showing up in a television series, but I see her making some sort of appearance later down the line um, in some sort of later film if they try to place that story somewhere. And like, we know she's already done Forces of Destiny. We're not talking about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so so not a not a uh, a saga film. Not not even necessarily episode ten, but maybe another story that takes place around that era, and maybe the end of that first movie in the series has Ray show up, and they're all, oh, I see mm-hmm. the connection now. So something along those lines let's flip it though let's go dark side on this will adam driver appear in a live action star wars film or series after episode nine john what say you he won't he won't you say he won't why is that i think yeah i think kylo ren's gonna die and i think adam driver is gonna be all set with star wars after episode nine all right. Um, once again, I agree with you. I, I think that the uh, Kylo Ren character, the Ben Solo character, has to have some sort of 
closure because like I a think finality, there's yeah. yeah a finality. I think there's too much residing on his character being um, we've debated this before being the villain. I don't really know if that's necessarily the case, but I think there's something about his um, character that that says that the evil needs to be stopped. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I I don't necessarily think that he's going to be showing up. I think uh, he may die or. Uh, in some form he'll die. So I think the episode nine is going to be the final, um, final bookend for him. Will we find out Poe Dameron is in fact force sensitive in star Wars episode nine, no other place. Just will we find out that he's force sensitive in episode nine? Oh God, we will not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I I I I never thought about that until recently when I saw that scene where he gets startled after Ray's being tortured, mm-hmm. and people are bringing up, "Oh, he's born by the Force Tree," and blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Oh man." So I'm gonna change my mind about this, but right now I'm just saying he will because I'm on that plane right now. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, I say there's not a chance. Uh, I think that uh, if you ever want to touch on the fact that, like, well, everybody's force sensitive in a specific kind of way, that's fine, and I, I might even agree with that. I think that's just stories for novels and comics and stuff like that. The films itself, Ray is force sensitive. Adam Driver, Kylo Ren, those are force sensitive characters. But Finn and Poe yeah. and and Rose and all those other people, Leia, like, oh, okay, yeah, you're probably <laughs> bad right. example with Leia, but all right. But Leia. Uh, <laughs> I said Leia at first because she's always been someone that isn't necessarily force sensitive. I guess she. All right. Bad example altogether. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, <laughs> Here come the comments now. <laughs> will Joseph Snoke return in episode nine? That's a tricksy question. Um, <laughs> now, now you think it's a good idea. A little inside I, stab there. Um, <laughs> I'll let you talk about that, but I'm going to say uh, he will not. Okay, so, um, you know, it's funny. Last week I talked about someone um, out on the podcast that uh, was um, not on the podcast, but someone I work with uh, who brought up, uh, you know, how awesome the Darth Maul shirts were. And uh, in the same discussion, actually, I uh, talked to him about how the the current title for episode nine, it kind of a a uh, joke title or whatever it's called Trixie. And there's maybe possibly some sort of connections to, uh, you know, um, Andy circus having played Schmeagle or Golem. And he says Trixie and that could be, Oh, it's a, it's a plot twist. There's, there's more meaning to it. Um, and you know, some of the, uh, some of the dialogue in the movie might even possibly tie into the idea of Snoke making a return. Look, <laughs> I, I don't care if they do it or not, but I think that if they do it, and we're about to get into a deeper discussion on this, if they do it, it's in direct contrast. I don't think it it helps The Last Jedi get better. I think it's a way of them saying like, nah, y- you know, I wish you didn't kill off Snoke, so I'm going to figure out a way to bring him back. We got a bit of a villain problem here. We need to bring a villain back. Yeah, so I'm actually going to say that Snoke will not return in 9 because I think J.J., um, we'll honor what, uh, what, uh, Ryan Johnson decided to do with Last Jedi. So that's mm-hmm. a no from me. He will not make his return. All right. That are, that's all the questions we, uh, we have this week for the new segment, the will of the force. Will they, won't they, we'll give you an answer real quick. That's not the catch line in development. Catch the, line in catch develop, phrase in, in development. development. <laughs> or maybe it's and you not. Don't know what that we means. don't know. Yeah, who knows? It's a written on a napkin somewhere, man. Um, that was fun. I had fun with that. Yeah, that was good. Obi Wan once thought as you do. All right, so you want to get into this discussion? Not really. No, I'm just kidding. It's 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 hard well, though. It's all speculation. Like we even call it in the show notes that John writes. Oh. He wrote speculative discussion there's there's hardly evidence to this i know but i like speculating all fans like speculating and you should be allowed to speculate however you want as long as you don't try to prevent present something as fact yeah no there's a one more step too don't hold on to it so tightly that when when that's not true that um you know you're upset with that and you're like i really wish it was this thing that i thought might have been the case that you made up you know so right 
don't build it up in your head as a permanent mm -hmm. resident. Um, so um, we had a user ask us on Monday uh, this question about whether or not episode nine will be affected by the reaction to The Last Jedi. And they even asked, do you think Solo had an effect there? And I said, no, not Solo. But we're going to really talk about does episode eight, The Last Jedi, have an effect on how J.J. and Chris Terrio, Chris Terrio wound up finishing up the writing and final drafts of Episode Nine, And that was thanks to Darth Hurricane, who mm -hmm. asked us uh, on Monday for that. So thanks, Darth. You uh, inspired this conversation. And so let's kind of try to tackle this from every angle possible. But starting with, we know that J.J. started this script from scratch. They booted Trevorrow's story, so it's J.J.'s time again with Chris Terrio, who he probably brought in to help him close close out, because a lot of people say J.J. Abrams can create stories, but he can't finish them. Um, Lost being an example, I guess, of that. But he started the script around late September, I believe, and he said on Colbert Report they had just finished it and they were done with their script in the end of February, which puts The Last Jedi opening right in between that period of time, and the reactions came out soon after. So, James... Let's talk about it. Do we think that the reaction to episode eight and how different it was and how crazy it was, as awesome as we both think it was, do we think that there's a reaction coming in how they finished episode nine? And are we going to go full fan service here? Is it going to get uh, old school the way The Force Awakens was? Like, what do, what, do you, what are you thinking? And then let's just tear into it. Um, all right. So I'm just going to spoiler alert this thing and just go, no, I don't think JJ made any changes. Okay. Do you want me to get into that, or do you want to share what you think? Well, give me your initial, um, like when you have a science experiment, and you're like, here's my theory, opening or, thesis. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, theory, yeah. So, My gut reaction to the possibility of him having changed the story um, is, is something kind of similar to Ryan Johnson um, having worked on The Last Jedi before The Force Awakens was even released. Um, I think that he worked on that. He saw the movie. He, he goes, okay, I know where the story's going. And he kind of wrote his own thing. And then he went back to Lucasfilm and he said, are you guys cool with everything that I'm doing? And they very openly and clearly said, yeah, we want you do your thing. You take this story wherever you're going. And so... When I hear that J.J. started this story before Last Jedi was released, we kind of have a similar time frame. So he has, he probably was aware of what, I mean, obviously he was producing the film and stuff, so he knows what was going on with The Last Jedi. Uh, he knew where that story was going. And yep. when he was asked to start writing the script, he goes, I, I already know everything that's going to happen. So his decisions on whether he was going to piggyback off of what Ryan Johnson uh, has planned or his decision to say, you know what, I, if, if it's up to me, I'm going back to the, the, the Snoke and Knights of Ren and this, or the, this different vibe that I didn't really get from the last Jedi. It's good. But like, if I'm going to tell a star Wars story, it's going to be more like what I did before force awakens. That decision was made when he was asked and accepted to do the movie. Okay. So, my my issue with that, and then I'll give my pitch, is that he knew about episode eight. Yeah, absolutely. He read it, even allegedly said he wished he had directed it. He may have said that in an off-the-cuff statement in an interview. Well, who knows if he actually meant that. But this was, again, you know, before the general audience saw it and reacted to it. So that that's what I'm thinking is he may have said, all right, I'm going to start writing this thing. And based on my knowledge of this full script in episode eight, I understand everything that happens from point A to, to the end. But the reaction that the audience had and that there was, you know, some divisiveness um, may have changed things a little bit. So not necessarily the content, but the reaction to it. Um, now, with that said, I think he may have changed some things up a bit. Um but I am also with you in that he has his thoughts on how things were going to go, and he may employ old things that Ryan Johnson may have punted for the sake of his um, telling of the story. So I, I'm in the like the middle. I'm in the blend there a little bit because um, mm -hmm. I, I I I do think I want to talk to you about this because I have my thoughts on this. Do you think the Last Jedi was reactionary to the Force Awakens in any way? In other words. The Force, the Force Awakens was considered a reboot and almost like a 
uh, nod to New Hope too much, almost like a mirror where Ryan Johnson took the Last Jedi and was like, "We're going way over here with this one." Or do you think that was just in, you know coincidence because he was just writing his movie? Uh, coincidence because he was just writing his okay. movie. Okay. Um, so, but so uh, then I get then you're consistent in what you're saying. You just think you know this guy's doing his, this guy's doing his, this guy's doing his. And uh, JJ is not going to be affected by eight. The only reason why I think it, he is going to be affected by eight is don't, because don't forget too. Don't forget. I think that the, the Lucasfilm's motto right now is that they want each director to tell their own story, and they don't want to interfere. As much as fans want to say, yes. "Guys, figure it out first. Lay out the basic idea of the trilogy, and then let directors come in and make their put their own like stamp on the things that are already written." Like what I'll is that? This. And I think that maybe that's going to be Ryan Johnson's trilogy. It's Ryan Johnson saying the whole yeah. thing and then he's like hiring directors to tell his story that's not happening in in these three movies and i think we got to remember no. that but i'll say this they 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 got rid of trevorrow because there were clear creative differences in what he wanted to do and what they wanted to do and whatever which was a reaction to leia's death most likely we don't know yes. that for sure yes I, i'm sorry not leia's that's, death. yeah that's carrie been fisher's the likely death. speculation <laughs> carrie yeah. fisher's death yes um, so they must have gone to JJ and said, all right, do you want to come back? You want to do this thing, close this thing out, get together with your writer, like whatever, give us a pitch, let us know what your pitch is, uh, to close the thing out. How are you going to end this story? That's probably what they wanted to know the most. Yeah. And he, he probably not blew them away. He probably told, gave him a pitch and they were like, all right, dude, let's bring you back. Let's do this thing. The force awakens was great. People loved it. It made a lot of money. Let's go. And uh, so in terms of the end piece, I don't think he changed that based on The Last Jedi. But I think there's elements to his movie that he's going to add some fan service, kind of bring the nostalgia back in, the member berries, the South Park. Oh, I remember. Oh, yeah, it feels good. The feels. Sure. Oh, yeah. I remember not having bills. I remember being a kid and just loving Star Wars and throwing on a cape and jumping off my couch with a lightsaber. He's going to bring a lot of that feeling back, more, maybe more so than he would have had The Last Jedi not gotten such backlash from uh, and divisiveness from uh, certain people. So uh, while I think it's not going to be a grand overhaul, I do think he's going to... He, he did was affected in some way in the later drafts. All right, so you've kind of solidified what you were saying. You, before you were saying, I'm kind of, I don't know. And now you've kind of talked yourself into the possibility. You're like... Well, no. Uh, I, I don't, like I said, I don't think he overhauled the final end piece of the, the climax of the movie or anything like that. Um, I think he has ideas that he wanted to probably keep in place from the beginning, like you were saying. But at the same time, I do think he probably changed some things and employed some maybe non-majorly impactful things, but maybe they pressed the foot on the gas for Billy D a little harder. Maybe uh, yeah, things like yeah. that. Yeah, please, let's get let's get into a couple like examples what you might think. Like like J.J. Abrams walks out of Last Jedi and, the same way. Like, you ever seen that movie Fanboys? Yeah, yeah. Like where there's like the guy gets the tattoo and he's like, it says like Jar Jar. And he's like, there's no way I'm not going to love this tattoo forever. Right. Or whatever, you know, <laughs> um, or like them going into Phantom Menace and stuff. Like, do you think there's any possibility that JJ sees the movie and then he's like, oh my God, dude, people are going to love Kelly Marie Tran. You know what I mean? Like I have mm -hmm. got to m grow on this character. Rose Tico is amazing. You know what I mean? And then there's just like the reaction comes out and then he's like, cross that out. And, you know, maybe we'll just create a new character that was supposed to be this, you know, yeah, you know, do you think it's that people or do you gonna, think it's like, man, people want more Canto bite. They're going to love this. Like he was a producer <laughs> on that film. So that whole segment was like, it was a big gamble, <laughs> pun intended, that they, nice. that we assumed, um, that they assumed that fans are really going to latch on to this well, world. That's always really the case with a lot of these movies. We're not seeing Canto bite in episode nine, but we maybe that. we were. I don't think so. I don't think but, so either. But I'm just saying, let's get to let's get to maybe some nitty gritty. There. I am doing a little bit. Those are the things that people the, they they right. specifically didn't like. So but, if they were to have shown up in JJ's thing, maybe they're like, do we want to go down that route? You know, do we really want to bring back this character, you know, this location? Look, some people may get offended and annoyed and at the idea of JJ maybe saying like. 
Yeah, like what you were saying about the Rose Tico. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, that's I don't. I think we need to put her on the back burner a little bit here. And it's nothing against Kelly Marie Tran. She was fantastic. She was wonderful, but the character kind of s- served its purpose. I'm on a back burner of this character, and people may get upset about that. They may even get upset about us talking about that right now. But that, our our meaning isn't for that. It's kind of like if there's a backlash to a certain character, and you don't feel like the character needs to be there. Like, look what George did to Jar Jar after The Phantom Menace. Like, if everyone loved Jar Jar Binks, you know he was going to have a bigger part in Attack of the Clones than being in the movie for five minutes. Mm -hmm. He was a a huge part of The Phantom Menace. Then again, he was... I mean, he does have enough parts in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, and he's part of the plot of, you know... He's part of the plot, but he wasn't on screen a lot to annoy the bejesus out of everybody. That's true. Point. And he kind of changed his personality. He was a little more like, uh, mooey. Dignified. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even like she cuts him off like, Jar Jar, okay, I got to go. See yeah. Ya. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I could see JJ saying like, you know, Rose was great. She, ser- she served her purpose, but um, we don't, that their character isn't necessary for what I need to do. And again, it has nothing to do with Kelly Murray Tran. She's fantastic. But the character is all set. And that, I can see that happening. And, and it could be because of the reaction to the character. I don't know. So I, I agree. Those things could happen. I definitely think things like Billy D. Williams, they're probably like, we got to get this guy back now. Like, JJ, can you find a spot for him in this script? Because you know Billy D. Like, Lando is not going to be a major player in Episode Nine. I don't think that at all. I, I think he will make an appearance and they'll find a way to like make him work within the... The, the overall plot, but I don't think that he's going to be at 81 years old, a major player in this movie. Do you? I'm, st- I'm still debating if he's even going to be in the movie. Honestly. Oh, really? I think he's definitely going to be in it. You think he's definitely going to be in it? I mean, we've heard some stuff and I just still haven't heard the thing yet that goes, you know, he was seen on set or, you know what I mean? We're announcing his casting or something like that. Um, I think everything just feels a little circumstantial right now. And I think the hope of wanting Billy D to show up fan wise is getting a little overhyped. You know what I mean? Like Billy D Mm -hmm. ate a sandwich the other day. Could that mean he's getting ready to prepare for star Wars episode nine? And fans are like, who, why else would you eat a sandwich? (laughs) (laughs) It has to be. He never eats sandwiches. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we never heard stories about him eating sandwiches until this happened. So it's, I don't know. I think it's a little overblown. Um, but I Grandpa do. Grandpa Billy D grew out his mustache again. What <laughs> yeah. is, what's going on with that? <laughs> yeah. Um, look, yeah. So his, his appearance in the movie, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know if that's even, do you think that's a reaction to episode eight? They're going, ah, eh, man, there wasn't very many classic characters in this movie. Yes. You I do? do? Really? Yep. But there yep. were classic characters in episode eight. I know, but the, Luke's dead. Uh, obviously, Leia's gone now. Um, yeah, but you, that they're, wasn't, they're all, that's not a reaction the, to the movie. The, that's, uh, no, it is, though, because they killed Luke. They, they, you're reacting to the movie. No, but that's that would be like the next logical step of, of us bringing in, like, we already know that Mark Hamill is going to be gone. Um, we actually find out because Carrie Fisher passed away in real life that she's not going to be in the movie. I would, th- I would honestly say that Billy D's showing up in the movie had more to do with Carrie's death than it did to the fact that they story wise decided to kill off Luke Skywalker because that yeah, was all that- pre-planned. They knew they were doing that. And when the right, fans came right. out and they said that's they didn't fair. like that to, yeah, to come fair. back and be like, well, then I guess we have to add Billy D. No, but at, you know what? You tell me, we're adding a force ghost Mark Hamill to the movie. That's a reaction to The Last Jedi. Well, I think that was going to happen anyway. He said, see you around, kid. Like, I think that was a pretty so, much a, a given. That right. he was, Luke's coming back. So, But, um, but I believe D that has more have, weight in the argument of a reaction. The only reason he's here is a reaction I to... I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I, I think Billy D could have been reactionary. I really do. I really but do. reactionary to what though? That's that's the thing. The is fan I, the the fan reaction to seeing all the old characters going away, not not expecting Luke to have died in the second of the three movies. Han's gone, Luke's gone. Now we know Leia, Carrie's gone. Uh, so Lando's Billy D's just sitting out there on a stairmaster, like, oh, I got my uh, my phones on. I'm waiting for the call. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, I and don't, fans I are don't like, know, 
Give us Lando. Come on. Yeah, but I don't think that's a re. I don't know. I just I disagree with that. I don't think that's a okay, reaction that's to Last Jedi. I think we'll revisit planets we haven't been back to since the prequels and original trilogy. I think, you know, I could see us doing a little Tatooine action. Yeah, I, I agree. Could. But I also I also think that I think we might see planets from the prequels too, which would be really cool. Which technically would be Tatooine as well. <laughs> that's um, true. Watch them get Dennis Lawson and watch Wedge come back. Because the group of Black Squadron, got, turns out that some of them got wiped out and they need to bring the old school X-Wing pilots back in. And all hands on deck. And you see an old wedge come in. Like, I, I could totally see stuff like that happening. Now, is he a big part of the plot? No. But could it have been a reactionary, like, we gotta, br- gotta bring some of this nostalgia back in here. We gotta do this. Get a little fan service here. I could see them being like, all right, Dennis, you came to Celebration last time. We know you have made fun of Star Wars the last 30 years and you thought it was all rubbish and blah, blah, blah. But you kind of turned the corner. We got one more of these movies to make. You're not getting any younger. Let's get Wedge back in the cockpit of an X-Wing. And he's like, okay. Like, give me 50 bucks. I'll do it. And they bring in Wedge. I can't... I can't stress enough that I think that while that is a very open possibility, I don't believe that that is reaction to The Last Jedi and the fan response. The, the movie comes out, they had one plan in mind, then the, the fan reaction is that they didn't really like the film and they go, oh, maybe we should change things up. Let's bring in Billy D. Let's bring in Dennis okay. Lawson. I think that that stuff... 100% is more reactionary to Carrie's death in the sense that they expected the first movie to be Han's story, the second movie to be Luke's, and the third movie to be uh, Leia's. Let, and they go, well, well we don't thing. have that anymore, so we need something else to carry us through. Let me get right to the point. Do you think there's anything whatsoever that we're going to see in Episode Nine that is in any way done or added at all due to the fact of the divisive reaction to it? what the content of episode eight the last jedi well okay i'm not, I'm not giving a definitive answer here because i still feel like I'm, I'm thinking about all the options number one is we have the option that jj abrams goes okay well um i really liked certain elements of the last jedi let's say for instance the character of rose or i don't know I, I don't know whatever there's some element of the last Jedi that he really liked and he wanted to be a big influence. Then the fan reaction comes out. Does he then say, Nope, I don't care what fans think. I'm going to, to double down on saying that I agree with Ryan Johnson's movie. I loved it. And I'm making these characters and making these story elements and making this kind of a movie more relevant in my episode nine. And you guys are just going to have to deal with it for the next 40 years because that was episode nine, you know? Um, it's interesting. Now the other, the other aspect of that is that he walked away from episode eight and goes, you know, um, I liked what I was doing before. I'm bringing back Snoke. I'm bringing back this uh, nostalgic kind of element. I'm bringing back um, the Knights of Ren and all these other things that they liked. That also kind of paints a picture that J.J. didn't like what Ryan Johnson did in Episode Eight. He's like, yeah, I didn't really see the direction he was going, so I had this other idea, and I was, I just brought that back. I just made that all that stuff happen again. Plus, we saw uh, people liked that movie, and they didn't really like his movie, so we just did that again. I think that paints paints Lucasfilm and the creators, and it puts Ryan Johnson in a very like corner. You know what I mean? Of like. We didn't really like what you did, and so we reacted to that, and we went and got the guy who produced a better movie. And that's not the real dialogue. <laughs> that's not the conversation at Lucasfilm, but it, it could potentially provide the conversation. So I think the third option is that he, wh- whether or not, whatever the reaction to Last Jedi was, whether it was positive or negative, J.J. said, the best route is to not even piggyback off of his story to the extent of like, oh, I'm going to expand on his characters or I'm going to expand on his lore. 
I think the idea behind Star Wars is make new. So JJ created a world in Force Awakens. Uh, Ryan Johnson ex- expanded and went into different worlds and did different things. So doubling yep. down on Canto Bite was a bad idea. Um, whether the m- reaction was positive or negative. So if okay, we got more but- Canto, if everybody liked Canto Bite and we went back to Canto Bite in episode but nine, they didn't, I think so what? exactly that. I don't think they're going to do that. I think he are, he already planned to not go to Canto bite and he already planned not to go to Jakku. So it's like, it, he's not recreating force awakens. He's not doubling down on, on last Jedi. Why he, does everyone want to go back to Jakku? I, I knew you were going to say that he's are, he already wrote a story where they went to X planet that we've never heard of. And the reaction to last Jedi was, man, we didn't like the stuff you did on Canto bite, or we didn't like this character. Right, and he's James. like, good thing. Cause I already wrote a story that doesn't involve Jakku or the, or this, mm-hmm. or, you know, these planets or anything from the last Jedi. I wrote all new stuff that just kind of fit into the canon of what happened in last Jedi. Sure. Boom. But, whatever, <laughs> whatever. What if, all right, so look at the the landscape of production from a business perspective, right? You have a lot of heat on Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm from Disney because there were issues with Solo, there were issues with Rogue One, way more than people realized with Rogue One, by the way. Tony Gilroy blew the lid off that and said that movie was a mess. Mm-hmm. And he did all those reshoots. And, and Gareth Edwards, to his credit, played ball and stuck in and he got his director's credit. Good for him. So, J.J. Abrams, as we know, when he took over with Larry and writing and then directed, that movie was smooth. Like, everything went really well with The Force Awakens. So, you bring him back, and you want a smooth production. You don't think there's a possibility that with the reaction to The Last Jedi and Bob Iger's like, well, you know, we're taking hits here in the later weeks. We, we made most of this money up front when people weren't realizing that people were pissed off about this movie. Kathy, you know, you got to get, give me some of this old school stuff that people love in this next movie. Like, let me know JJ's on board with this. Can we make it happen? And then Kathy's like with the story group and they pull JJ aside and like, all right, JJ, come here. Can we make like Jack who Tatooine? And can we, can we like find a way to get a couple of Ewoks in here? And like, how about like Billy D? Like, I know we were toying with this idea. Was, like, can you get him in this movie somehow? And like, I know he may, he may not be a big part, but can you get him to fit? And like, can we like maybe Mustafar? Like, can we round that out? Like, look at this list here. Pick seven things. There's a list of five planets. Can you pick two of them? And make those happen. Here's eight characters. Can you make four of those happen and fit them into your story structure? And let give me a call back. And let me know. You don't think that type of conversation could have happened in reaction to the divisiveness about how different the Last Jedi was? Because I I 100 do. Nope, not at all. And <laughs> not, not, uh, not even I just, just to simply I just put my heart into describing that. And you're just like, nah. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> here's the honest truth that I believe is that I, I honestly think that if someone who was honestly working on these films, whether they be producers or a story group or anything like that, I think if they heard that pitch, they would all as a group laugh and be like, that's, not even close to how it is being handled. There's no way that Disney is coming in and saying, hey, we, we read your story, uh, but you it's a right job of the hut in there somewhere. You know, it's like that is so contradictory well, they have to done how that. to do good. They've story done that on small scales. They have said, you know, we need to get this creature in there because we have a book coming out about it and we need to, you know, they've done that. They've talked about that. Yeah, but I don't. I don't even necessarily think that that stuff is like. I don't think J- JJ would put his heart and soul into a, a creature creation, and then they come along and they'd be like, "Yeah, we're scrapping that whole thing because we need to fit it into this book." I think anytime that ever happens is they go. I, I, we we haven't really thought it out, but it would be like some sort of creature on this, and they go, "Well, we have a couple options, and we have this one that's coming out in a yes. book. How does that sound?" Yes, like. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that's the same thing as saying, hey, JJ, we, we liked your script, but here's 10 things on a wall and you need to pick five of them. Now revamp your script to shoehorn these five things. But but it's your choice. You you're can not, pick between the, you're the, not the, the revamping 10 on this, this list. 
You're, well, first of all, the script was not done. They didn't finish it until two months after the movie, the, the Last Jedi, came out. So they could have been in the early drafts, right? The Lee Brackett Empire Strikes Back status. No, no, and no. And they're not I, trying to. I 100% not to, agree. I know out. what you're saying. Hear me out. All right. Here, we're ahead. Star Wars Warren now. We're Star Wars <laughs> yeah. Warren now. Um, and they could have said, like, oh, this is the early draft. You know, Bob reviewed it. We reviewed it. The story group reviewed it. And we just feel like there's some things here that we can make happen that doesn't compromise your vision or your overall arc for these main characters. And we could still add some stuff in here. Like, I, I don't see how you can say that they that's not a possibility. I don't. I just don't. Yeah. And may, maybe I'm way off, but I, I mean, I think this movie is going to be so, so full of rounding one through nine out that even I'll be annoyed at some of the prequel callbacks. And I don't think that's all JJ. I think it's going to be a lot. I think a bit, a portion, not a, a huge amount of this, but a portion of this is going to be affected by people kind of wanting that back after the difference that they felt seeing The Last Jedi. Here's the thing is I'm, I'm putting more credibility to J.J. Abrams as a storyteller um, and the ability to actually accomplish what The Force Awakens did. I'm giving him more of the credit than someone else like Disney coming in and, and, and correcting him on something. So I but don't he wrote think, that with Larry Kasdan. Okay, but, but here's my point is that I don't think that J.J. wrote a story and said, I think when he's writing Force Awakens, he's putting together the story and he's saying, look, I, I don't want to go back to Tatooine. What I want to do is I want to create a, a new planet that is going to be familiar. And so he created Jakku, you know? And I think that they, when they heard that, Disney's reaction to it wasn't, uh, nah, we really want that Tatooine in there. You know what I mean? Can you just make it Tatooine? I think they were on board with his concept of making things familiar, but yet at the same time creating new. And we got a lot of new in The Force Awakens. So JJ again, coming into this, he that's goes... That's before, though. <laughs> I know, but the Force Awakens was successful. I know, but something else happened after it, and that kind of teed people off a little bit. But they, but I don't, like like I said, when J.J. wrote the script, I don't think he wrote in anything that was that was so heavily reliant on things that happened in The Last Jedi that when The Last Jedi came out and fans didn't react well to it, that he was like, ooh, maybe we should pull that back. Because I think there was no you, revisiting Canto Bight. You know, what there, I hear it, from he you, created a new planet and it isn't relying on his, on the fans. So reaction to the last Jedi to, for that planet to be what it is and, I, and what, or what it's going to be. Nothing changes about saying. that planet. You're saying that he wrote episode nine, regardless as though he had no idea whether the last Jedi was hundred percent loved, hundred percent hated. He's yeah. just writing his episode nine. Yeah. I did, could, I, I disagree with that completely. All right. So, <laughs> so what that's do we do? We are. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I, I'm out of I'm out of points. Now, I have a feeling most of our listeners are going to agree with you. Um, I wonder what Lacey would think about this. Actually, I I I can't. I don't know. What What would your guess be? And then she'll tell to, us we're both wrong. Well, actually, let me talk about listeners real quick. I actually I do think that the listeners of our podcast probably would agree with me more likely. But I think mm -hmm. the overall general consensus of of people who watch the Star Wars movies or talk about it with their friends at work or whatever, they go, "Oh yeah, absolutely." Disney's Disney's pulling the strings here. They uh, fans didn't like Last Jedi, and uh, JJ is like now kind of caught in the mix. Like he wrote a so story, and they're like, saying, "No, you got to change this up, make it more like Force so, Awakens." We made a lot of money with that. I think that's what that's what so average what, fans are probably going to think is the case. But I think the reality of it is that Lucasfilm is like, "Nope, JJ, we love what you created with Force Awakens. Do it again. What's your pitch? We love your pitch. Do it." So just so I understand what it. you're saying is that swing away. The Star Wars fans who follow Star Wars closely will agree with James Bainey 
And the casual moviegoer who's like, oh, I like Star Wars will agree with me. Uh, because I think that the people, <laughs> that is what I'm saying. I, I th- In this particular you are, case. You are an absolute egomaniac, first of all. No, no, no. I, I think that in this case, the where I'm coming from is a perspective. I mean, I know you're coming from the same perspective, but my my standpoint is trust in Lucasfilm, trust in JJ, trust in the creators. And I think that right now the outside opinion of Star Wars is that Disney and Lucasfilm and all that don't know what they're doing like at all. Yeah, but that's not fair because my point of view is saying trust Lucasfilm too because they're the ones kind of like saying like we got to, you know, add some things in here and, and, and maybe a Disney influence is there, you know, because... Business, it, dollars is, is paramount. And no matter what people want to say about, oh, it's their creative vision and blah, blah, blah. Like Bob Iger could be like, uh, nope, screw that. Yeah, I, I need this. I need that. I need that. Like Bob Iger is very involved in these things, dude. He was the one who was like really at the forefront of making Black Panther happen. You know, I, like, I hear you. I just think that okay. anytime you All ever right. bring up a film and you say that a studio is reactionary to fan response... I think that that makes it seem like they don't really trust in their creators or have a plan. I mean, they were reactionary about Solo, but I don't know. Like, I, 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 I have no, I have no other things to say about this. So um, why don't we uh, try to wrap? Agree to disagree. Yes, I, I do. I do think that most of our listeners will agree with you, and they'll say I'm an idiot, but that's okay. You know. I, yeah, I got I the I, I predicted Solo's MacGuffin. I got that. Uh, <laughs> oh come on now! Now he's making a point sheet. I yeah. won the last. I think Jedi people challenge. are probably going to agree with you, but you know, I'm I'm right ninety nine percent of the time. But you know, <laughs> this uh, this seems to be in your court, James. Most likely, oh, like boy. whatever. Get out of here. I'll get out of here. Yeah, you're right. I should get out of here, James. But we have other stuff to do here. Yeah, you want to do resistance transmissions. I do, but I want to. I do want to ask the. We have to ask them. They they need to let us know what they think about all this because I love hearing from them in tweets and comments. So comment on the episode on YouTube. James puts together the YouTube slides and he's awesome at that. Uh, so let him know how correct he is, and he'll respond back with a thank you and that I'm wrong, and it'll be awesome. And then we'll try to find out what Lacey thinks about all this. He, she'll probably call both of us morons for all we know. But yeah, she'll have um, a completely third perspective or something. Third yeah. perspective. That would have been a Star Wars war if it was the three of us for sure. But um, yeah, let us know. We hope you enjoyed the discussion. We didn't get too heated about it, but it makes me think maybe a Star Wars war is on the horizon one of these days, James. But for now, I guess uh, let's hear from the Resistance. <laughs> All right, the resistance transmissions this week. Um, we, uh, I say we, but again, it was John. All, all, uh, all credit goes to oh, him. Oh, stop! He put up a tweet that uh, showed us the final shot of Kylo Ren in the Last Jedi, and it was the scene of him connecting one final time with Rey as she boards the Falcon. He doesn't say anything, but the shot is zoomed in on his face. And we wanted to ask you guys, what is going through Kylo Ren's head in this moment before Ray closes the door on him? And thank God that Lacey isn't here because now I'm just messing around. (laughs) Um, Because we heard we heard what's going through his head all last week on the discussion. Um, Yeah. You know. The, the puppy dog, the confliction, that's her point of view. So we'll, we'll talk about, um, we'll give her that credit. That's what we believe she would say in this uh, particular resistance transmission. But we wanted to hear what you guys thought. So we sent it out and uh, we got some replies. Uh, Han Spinal, Spinal, we always do this. Spinal. 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 Han Spinal. Right. At- well, his, name, his real name is Tab, I believe. Now I feel like you're pulling a Joseph Snoke on me. No, no, no. His real name is Tab. He told us, he's like, oh, just so you know, my name's not really Han. It's Tab. Okay. All right. I believe you. So <laughs> maybe I'm the gullible one, but no. All right. Um, but Han Spinal says, there's no reading between the lines here. The door to his distorted vision of the future is being closed by the girl he yet again underestimated 
he feels genuine uncertainty, perhaps even fear, for the first time since becoming Kylo Ren. He has lost what control he thought he had. That is Han Spinal's point of view um, of this scene. Do you like it? Do you agree with it? Uh, yeah, I do. That's kind of my my alley, uh, my take on it. Um, I know Lacey and I differed on this, and you have your take on it too. It's amazing how, I mean, credit to Ryan Johnson. He he left it there for us to kind of, uh, beauty and art is in the eye of the beholder, and everyone certainly has their take on this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I kind of, I'm kind of digging what uh, Tab here is saying. Um, but my t- twist on that is that I think he's just trying to manipulate her one more time, like, let me try to give it one last shot because this is all I have left. <laughs> all right. Well, let's hear a different perspective. Dilex at DilexOXO. Um, it's kind of cool. They said regret with a period. Uh, regret she did not join him and regret he could not go with her. I'm still not sure about Kylo's ulterior motives. I truly believe there's more to I'm going to finish what grandfather started. And that's in quotes. Things might be different from what we have been shown so far. Um, It's cryptic. (laughs) Yeah, it is kind of cryptic. I think that they are really in the same perspective that most of us are in. Um, I understand the regret. I understand that that, um, things aren't necessarily going the way that um, Kylo or Ben planned because um, he wanted uh ray by his side and she turned him down so i do understand that so that this angle almost seems like it it aligns with Lacey's a little bit like a little he, bit yeah, yeah yeah um but there is this other half that i don't necessarily know that Lacey would agree with because um she, you know i truly believe that there's more to i'm gonna finish what grandfather started um, and his ulterior motives, meaning usually when you say his ulterior motives, it's usually more of a, a menacing or evil thing. Like yeah, I have true. bigger that's plans. Um, so, um, but then again, you know, uh, dialects here is saying that the, they don't know if there are any alter ulterior motives. Um, and it's kind of hard to read him, but, uh, but that's the perspective. We asked the question that was their perspective. Yeah, this next one I think is the the real deep dive though. Yeah, so how would you say this person's last name? This is Todd Disgrosselliers. Disgrosselliers. Man, you're good at that. Disgrosselliers at Todd Knows Best and that is not K N O W S. <laughs> that is that thing in the middle of your face. Todd yeah. Knows Best. Um and this is um this is deep, actually. I, this is probably my favorite. He said, this, kids, is the story of how I met your mother. <laughs> James, your wife would love that, huh? Oh, my wife loves How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, I do, too. It's a good show. I do, too. I always like that show. I remember being in a, a Target one time with one of my friends, and we were going through uh, some of the DVDs and uh, that they sell. And I remember going like, "Why do they? Why do they carry this stuff? How does this stuff end up in Target? Like, How I Met Your Mother? Like, is anybody watching that show seriously?" And I remember him going, "I don't know, man. I think that's like a pretty popular show." Yeah, <laughs> but it was like fourth season or something, and then. Um, I don't know. My wife turned me on to it and I was like, Oh, this is that show that I thought nobody watched. All right, whatever. And then it actually ended up being like a really well-written, like there's so many like sub jokes and stuff, but, uh, yeah, we got, (laughs) we got way off topic here. I do think that's a, that's a good resistance transmission, man. We got one that, um, really says, you know, I'm definitive. I know exactly what I think he is going through his head. We got another that says, who knows? It could be so many yeah. things, so many possibilities. And then we got one that said, I don't know, whatever. Just, <laughs> I'm just having some fun with the resistance broadcast right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do we, uh, let, let's keep the resistance transmissions rolling, but let's not Ooh. do, um, Let's not do this Kylo Ren thing because I think we kind of wore that out. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Well, remember, I think it was last week we were getting like so like tired of constantly saying the Benioff and Wise series of films, and we were like, we got to call this thing something. And Lacey was like, call it the D and D because that's what they call it on Game of Thrones. And you were saying like, call 
B and W, but then I tweeted that out and someone said it was confusing. And then I said, how about B dubs or, you know, whatever Weiss and you know, who knows? Like B dubs isn't already a thing. I know. I know. Yeah. So to try to shorten this thing, we asked you guys to give us ideas on what we could call that series of films by uh, Benioff and Weiss. And we got a lot of different answers. And these two choices, we had two choices that were given the most often in some variety or another. So we ran a poll. And it was down to these two choices. And uh, uh, until we have actual names for these movies, we're going to let you guys decide what we're going to call this series of films to make it easier, just simply easier on us on the podcast, which may even take our episodes down from an hour to 20 minutes. So we said, what are we calling the Benioff and Y series of films on the podcast for short? And your two choices were D&D films and B&W films or B&W. And James, what are we calling these series of films? Uh, we're calling them the GOTC films. There it is, folks. Game of Thrones creators films. There it is. No, I'm just kidding. We're not Wasn't even a choice, that. but that was, that was my pick. I think GOTC films... You know, you got the Ryan Johnson films and you got the GOTC films coming out. Um, made mm-hmm. the most sense to me. Um, I actually uh, disagree with what won, but the B and I don't even understand the question. Is it B and W or B and dub? I think it's B and W with dub as an option. Okay. So it's both of those. B, see, it, how can it be a conclusive winner when <laughs> the the way it's even written is kind of well? Weird. The dub is in parenthesis, so all right. So the B and W films or the B and Dub films, uh, for short, I agree. More likely that the easier name is the D and D films. Mm-hmm. Just to so simply we may, say, we may disregard the poll results of this <laughs> dude anyway. Uh, but thank you guys for voting on that. Well, man, you got the Ryan Johnson trilogy coming out, and you got the D and D films coming up next. You know, you got the mm-hmm. Ryan Johnson trilogy coming out, and then right after that, we're probably going to be heading into the B and Dub films. I don't know. It just mm. doesn't doesn't flow as well in my opinion. So next, what about next week? We try to find a way to talk about this. And we'll see which one rolls off the tongue better overall. All right, let's do it. Okay, right on. So that's it. We all, we're done? Uh, show notes here written by John Hoey Esquire <laughs> says, Final thoughts. Esquire. Yeah. Um, well, we got to make sure that uh, people respond to these resistance transmissions because I really feel like they like doing this more than asking the questions. And we always <laughs> get a lot of responses to these. So... Um, whenever we post these things out, make sure you comment underneath, retweet them out, and we love... The funnier, the better with these things. Like that How I Met Your Mother thing was funny. It's probably a common response. It's like, who wants to ask a question? Who cares what those guys think? I don't care what those guys think. I care yeah. what I think. It's like, so we ask a question, <laughs> what do you think? And they're like, ooh, I think this. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just like a... A uh, subconscious thing that people just tend to do is they'd be like, ooh, my opinion on something. I'll write in. Yes. And I'm going to listen until that, and then I'm going to shut it off. Um, all right. So yeah, for those of you who haven't shut it off yet, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Twitter. Twitter? So, <laughs> iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N. Uh, always engage with us. Make sure you like and comment on our YouTube videos. And uh, like I said, following us on SoundCloud, a lot of people don't realize you can do that, but it is a key way to get the episodes as well. And uh, we've been growing that audience too. So very cool. Thank you very much to everyone who rated us on iTunes. We have crossed our milestone. We are over 100 ratings on iTunes. So thank you so much to everyone who does that and takes the time for that. Let's aim for 150 and 200. So thank you again. Head to our store, tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. Check out one of our over 25 designs, including our no our new uh, Darth Maul designs. And uh, as always, go to our website, starwarsnewsnet.com, every day for your latest Star Wars news reviews, information, editorials, uh, all that stuff. And James Bainey, where can people find you, man? If you guys want to find me online, you can find me at Instastir or Twittergram, at Meyer Trunks. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, you have no clue what I just said. And that was thir- three seconds of gibberish. <laughs> All right. Um, and you guys can find me at Johnny Hoey on Twitter 
And um, that's pretty much it. And over at StarWarsNewsNet.com, writing and editing every week. And you guys can find Lacey, who will be back on Monday at Lacey Gillerin on Twitter. And she's always making sure you know that she's tweeting about Kylo Ren and annoying the bejesus out of both me and James. When she tweets about Kylo Ren, does he or does he not have his shirt on? Will the Force, yes or no? He will not. He will not have a shirt on. All right. Yeah. All right. I agree. I mean, that's just my guess. I don't if want to she speak was tweeting her. about it, I, I, get, I agree. He would probably yeah. not have a shirt on in the tweet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, so Lacey will be back with us on Monday. We hope you enjoy the show. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy your weekends, and we will catch up with you in a few days right here on the Resistance Broadcast. Resistance Broadcast.